very happy for making this video because um i've had a friend pass the IELTS and i'm here to um give a commentary on that okay i'll be showing you the results he had and how he was able to maneuver his way to getting such a result probably if you are writing the IELTS or if you've written it on a number of occasions and you think i mean you can't make it i think this video will motivate you so stay tuned and then let's look at what transpired When I had the opportunity to come to the UK, I felt I had to share my story to motivate other people, I mean other young nurses in Africa to probably take action to um, enhance their nursing skills. So um, this person I'm going to talk about was one of them. Uh, he contacted me saying that he wanted to write the IELTS. And um, I just had to, I mean in fact I was very happy and I was willing to give out my support, okay? Even though I couldn't give the maximum support I, I wish I could or the maximum support was expected. But at least the little I did, I think I appreciate and it has yielded this resource. So, um, when did he start preparing? When did he register? What is the resource? What happened? I mean, we are going to elaborate on that in this video. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the resource he had. I call it the gentleman pass, okay? So, with this resource that you are seeing on the screen, um, the listening here is 7.5. And reading is 7.0. Writing is 6.5. Speaking is 7.0 and the overall band score is 7.0. So he has passed. I mean, he's qualified to register with the UK NMG. All right. He can also register with the regulatory body of USC. He can also register with the regulatory body of Canada. Probably he has a wide range of opportunities ahead of him. It's up to him to decide as to whether he's going here or there. Okay. So the question is, how was he able to get this resource? Well, um, I haven't spoken to him much, but I believe that it's all about consistency. I mean, IELTS is not as easy as we present it to be. It only becomes very easy if you are consistent. And what do I mean by this? Consistency is practicing IELTS each and every day. You see, there are some people who might possibly um, be interested in writing the IELTS. They practice today and it's like, I mean, they wait for about two weeks to practice and do another practice, you know. When this happens, you are not consistent and the possibility that you get a required band score is very high. So one thing I saw about this gentleman is that he was very consistent. He was serious about it, okay? Even though he's working, he had time for the IELTS. So you have no reason to say um, your work schedule is tight and that you can't practice I and mean, you don't have enough time to practice the IELTS, all right? So just be consistent. And in as much as you are being consistent, make sure that whatever practice you do, you are looking out for why you had an answer wrong and why you had an answer right that is very very important i will say that it's not about how many practice sessions you can have a day it's about how many practice sessions um you can review and then see why you had an answer wrong and why you had an answer right okay so this is a resource he's had and he has a lot of opportunities i mean awaiting him it's up to him to decide as to whether he's going here or there but i believe that he started with the uk nnt registration and that's a good start okay because once you come to the UK, there are a lot of opportunities out there um, staring at you and it's up to you to choose whichever way you want to go. And in the UK, you can still extend your tentacles, go to other places and then still um, explore how nursing is in there, okay? So um, one of the things I I mean he did, that got him the score, as you are seeing on the screen, is he was consistent. In fact, he never gave excuses. He was working as well as practicing the IELTS, so you can also do it, okay? And... Uh, Another thing I also have to say here, which I loved about him, is that, I mean, he resorted to consulting people who had already gone ahead of him in the journey. So I was one of the people he consulted and I gave my experience, I shared with him um, what um, to expect and then probably how to go about things. I mean, how to be able to stand firm when the idea of negativity comes to mind, you know. Because once you decide to write IELTS, especially if you tell French, um, one thing that comes to mind is that they will start uh, discouraging you, especially those who have heard other people feel IELTS, you know. So, um, talking to people who have gone ahead of you in the journey may go a long way to help you, all right. So, this is one of the things he did, which I believe got in the score you are seeing on the screen now. I call this the gentleman pass because, you see, 
the least you can have for the IELT writing test is 6.5 for UK, and that is what is hard. So, I mean, you wouldn't know how happy it is to pass IELTS because if you measure the amount of effort, the amount of time, and the money you have to invest, printing out, I mean, hard copies, um, actually going to the examination center, um, join courses, watching YouTube videos, and a whole lot of that. You see, you wouldn't appreciate it until you pass. And that is why I always motivate people to not give up so easily. You might have written IELTS on so many occasions. You might have written about five times, more than five times. And I mean, you've given up. I, I know some people who have written just once and because they couldn't pass, they've given up. I mean, don't give up so easily, okay? It's good you pass IELTS in the first attempt. And I also advise that if you are going in to write IELTS for the first time, just have it at the back of your mind that you are going in once and for all okay but if it doesn't happen that way it doesn't mean you are not well it doesn't mean you didn't put in much effort it doesn't mean um you can't try again it's a, a learning experience and you have to pick it up from there okay all right so another important thing about the speaking he shared with me has to do with you see because of the covid issues um when you are registering for the IELTS, and, and nowadays you can choose a separate date for your speaking test okay so once you choose a separate date, um, there are other two options you also have to uh, decide which one you are going for. Um, they will ask you whether you want to do the face-to-face -face speaking or the video call speaking. And most people I have spoken to um, who chose the face-to-face -face, along the day ended up doing the video call speaking test. And this is how it happens. It's not as if you sit in the comfort of your home and then be doing that Zoom video or whatever. You go to the examination center and they have a separate room with laptops and everything set up for you. And uh, from what I heard, the examiner will be far away, will not be at the center, will either be at, I mean, a different location and you will be in the room there um, just to actually um, be answering the questions that will be thrown at you in the video call. And according to a friend, um, it was a Zoom call, okay? And I mean, they will make sure that everything in there is being fed. Um, they are able to monitor your progress, they are able to monitor whatever you are doing, as to whether you are cheating, um, I mean, figure training and all of that. So, just keep that in mind. You may have chosen the face-to-face -face IELTS, but that doesn't mean that you are going to do the face-to-face. -face. So, in as much as you are practicing the speaking test, also incorporate the Zoom call style, okay? So that at the end of the day, when you are thrown up the balance, you'll be able to, I mean, you've had experience in both areas. So you wouldn't have to panic or be anxious. One thing he said was, um, because he had done the free to face, uh, when he goes to the examination center and it was like he was to do the video call, he felt anxious. But you see, the anxiety comes in all aspects, whether you are doing the face to face or the um video call. It's up to you to have a defense mechanism. I mean, what do you do when you are anxious? You should have something to just calm your anxiety level. Okay. So basically, if you are giving up on IELTS. If you're facing IELTS on too many occasions, I think this story would go a long way to motivate you. You don't need man nine throughout to be able to seal your dream. You just need the requirements your desired country wants, and that is all. So thank you very much. If you have not subscribed to my channel, just make sure you are subscribing and uh, also make sure you are hitting the notification bell so that anytime I upload a new video, you'll be the first person to get it. I give tips and strategies and I'm very happy because about five or six people have um, gotten in touch with um, sharing my experience, teaching them the strategies and techniques have been able to pass in the first attempt and that is what I'm happy about and that is why I have to make this video, okay? I am very, very much happy that my effort, I mean my little effort, I'm not able to help that much but my little effort is producing good results and I'm happy and that is what I aim for because I want to encourage, I want to motivate young African nurses to come in here, experience our nursing is like, and at the end of the day, we can go back and then make an impact in our nursing. I mean, that is all I'm looking out for. Thank you very much for watching this video. My name is Seth.